All right, I am thrilled to introduce our this month's guest. Um, it is, he is, um, Anello Molica from Central Waters Brewing, co-founder and general, did I screw it up? You're fine. Dang it, all right. Um, uh, Central Waters Brewing, um, You, if you know anything about the Wisconsin beer industry or the Wisconsin beer scene, you probably know about Central Waters. So, uh, a brewery that needs no introduction. Anello, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, buddy. And thanks for your flexibility also in making this happen instead of last week. So. No problem. Appreciate it. Anything for you, Draws. You know oh, oh, well. Oh, right. you're Amherst. Oh, no. might have to. Hey, speaking of, you got any cases of that uh, toppling waters laying around there? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm okay. sorry. Bad connection. So we, we've, <laughs> talked about, we've talked about what we're going to talk about mostly tonight uh, sure. in a previous episode, but um, can you give us kind of an uh, overview of what Central Waters Milwaukee is? Central Waters Milwaukee specifically, huh? Do you want well, like the whole yeah. story, like how we got to where we are right now this year type of thing? Uh, seems kind of told, told, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it was told. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what we're shooting for here with this place, I'll give you sort of our vision quick here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. We're humbled to have been offered that. And um, the way that we're envisioning this, we're kind of assembling uh, what is turning out to be just a really stellar team down there with uh, an incredible GM and an incredible brewer. And so we just want this really awesome space with really good food. All the beers that we're producing there are going to be Milwaukee exclusive. So that place isn't going to be making any beers that Amherst is making. It's going to be its own thing. Uh, and so we're going to just kind of diversify our portfolio, have the flexibility to brew some things down there that we can or don't have the room for up in Amherst. Um, and we're, we're currently just in the process of trying to re-envision what that space is going to look like to make it a central waters facility. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. um, And this facility that you mentioned is, I mean, you said it was a really cool space, but that kind of undersells it by about tenfold. <laughs> um, this is the former Pabst Milwaukee, um, but that's like, that's like, uh, like Pap that was, it was Pabst Milwaukee for like three years or something, four years. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I think they started like 2017, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. And then before that, this was a, uh, like a, a Methodist, I think it was Methodist church on the grounds of the Pabst Brewing complex so it was it's this little church and it looks like a church with you know yeah. the, the so, whole thing right, right next to all these big buildings that are like you know cranking out stuff. oceans yeah, of beer so yeah it was actually only a church until 1890 so frederick paps bought the church in 1890 because the german methodists were like teetotalers right like they were anti-alcohol <laughs> and so as like the paps brewery grew frederick paps bought him moved him two miles away took the steeple off the building and replaced it with the castle tower that matches all the other architecture you see on those Paps buildings. And so then it operated from that point on on the second floor, which is where our tap room is and where the kitchen space is. Um, that operated as like a Paps training facility. Uh, and the bottom floor, which is where the brewery is now, was actually a German restaurant called the Forst Keller that ran from like 1890s until all the way up until the 1970s. Okay. So there's there's a little bit of there's a little bit of history in this place. And oh yeah, like I, I just got home today. I've been down there since Sunday. Okay, like, you know, face looking the joint. I've been knee deep in paint for like three days, and you know, was, with like Ryder Cup, I had a hard time getting a hotel room in Milwaukee for four <laughs> nights, right? And I'm like, I'll just I'm a camping guy, right? I'll just bring my camping gear and I'll sleep in there. But then I was like, there is no way that place is not haunted. There's no way it's not haunted, right? There's all it's like a German Methodist, like anti-alcohol folks. I'm a brewery owner, like <laughs> no, no, absolutely, nope, not gonna do it. Yeah, okay, that seems that seems <laughs> like a good good move there. Um, okay, so where is this all at? I mean, last time uh, last time we talked uh, was back in summer when this all this all was coming out, and um, you said it'd be opening this fall. I'm wearing a flannel. We all got hoodies on. You know, Equinox was this week, so. Do you have an opening date yet, or kind of where are we at in, in the like in progress? This close. Yeah. This close to the opening date. I think you'll mm -hmm. see us be able to announce that. I'm I'm hoping uh, very early next week. 
What I okay. can say is that this week was a huge accomplishment. We got a lot of the major projects off of our table. Have you seen the space before? Have you been in the PEPs? Oh, yeah. It's wow. awesome. Yeah. So th there's a couple of things that just don't fit the central yeah. waters and the, the, the bar, things like the way it looks. It's just not, it doesn't really fit us. So we need to kind of redo that. And it's been, it's been a struggle with getting like contractors or anybody to do what we want to do. So we're going to end up doing it ourselves. Um, and then we also still deal with like state, city, federal, historical society issues of what we can change and what we can't change because of the historical nature of that of that uh, property. I'll say this, uh, it is going to be the month of October. We haven't said that publicly really yet, but it's going to be the month of October. So we're really, really close. Okay. Awesome. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. What, um, you, you alluded in the open to this t a team. And I think that, I mean, there are two pretty prominent people that I think deserve to be named and, and discussed a little bit here. Um, you mentioned the brewer and um, the general manager. Can you talk about who they are? Absolutely. So uh, by fortuitous circumstances, um, and, and if I start to like be long-winded, just like cut me short because I can I'm not going to cut you short for a long time. So yeah. um, <laughs> the GM position is a good one. Um, so, you know, as happens in the beer and wholesaler world, if a high-profile figure from a high-profile high profile account leaves, my wholesaler will usually call and say, hey, just so you know, so-and-so is not with this place anymore. So I roll into a Monday morning and we know like Wednesday or so of that week, we're going to post the job opening for the GM. And I get a call from Beachwood, who's my wholesaler saying, hey, just so you know, um, Eric isn't with Draft and Vessel any longer. And I was like, I, I thought he owned it. You know, like I think everybody thought Eric owned that place, right? Because he was the face of Draft and Vessel. Yeah which is still, it, it's an amazing place. Like the, the ownership and uh, Eric at the time did a really great job of, you know, building that place into what it is today. Um, and so we and just, just for everybody who doesn't know, Draft and Vessel is a pretty small um, outfit, uh, you know, uh, beer bar and kind of like to go package combination in, um, it's in Shorewood, I think technically. Um, yeah, just, you first know. First place in Shorewood, yeah. They yeah, and then they've got a, they, they, they have a, They've got a, a couple um, places that have opened since then, including down in the Tosa Village, which we just mentioned. So anyway, carry on. Yeah. So Eric applied for the job. And uh, I was ecstatic to see that. And you're like this. We pulled it. Oh, yeah. We pulled it around. <laughs> I was like, let's do this. Um, so we got uh, Eric on board, who's just an amazing individual with a lot of skills and just, you know, knows how to run a place. He's a he's a big part of the Milwaukee beer fabric already. Um, and so we're just really pleased to have him to, you know, deepen that beer fabric along with Central Waters. Um, and then, you know, brewers, like we had a lot of, we had a lot of resumes come in. Um, it was heartening to see all the people that wanted to come and work for us at that, at that spot. It is, it is a little bit of a dream job for a brewer, you know? So, um, ultimately we ended up hiring, uh, Brendan. So, uh, Brendan was formerly with, uh, Good City. So he came over from Good City to us. He's got, uh, he's extremely knowledgeable about all things beer. Uh, probably, you know, of all the brewers his age that I've spoken with, he's got some of the most technical knowledge of anybody that I've ever spoken with. And his plan for the beers that he's looking to make are exactly what we were looking for. Yeah. So. And, th and this is a, I mean, that brewery is a pretty, I mean, as I recall, that was a pretty much tap, top of the line but small, but top of the line brewery that perhaps installed there in it's an awesome brewery. just a few years ago. Yeah. It's an awesome brewery. I mean, and what, how big is that? It's, is it seven and a half? Too big. Yeah. yeah. It's a 10 barrel system. 10 barrel. Okay. Yeah. So they, there's like many people have said there's like a 15 pound ham and a 10 pound can in here. Like they packed that little space with yeah. 10 barrel fermenters and 20 barrel fermenters and a 10 barrel system, uh, which is, it's great. It's a really, really nice system. Uh, we've actually already removed about half of the fermentation space from there. So we we ripped out five fermenters um, because it's just, that space didn't need 7,000 barrels capacity, you know, and that's pretty close to what was in there. 
<laughs> it's not going to do 7,000 barrels out of that yeah. space, man. You know, it's not going to happen. So um, what that did is it made room for us to put in a canning line. So we have that installed. Uh, we're working on getting it running. We did our first cruise this week. Yeah. 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 So what's what's um what is that what's the vision for how this works with Amherst and kind of uh, the, I mean the kind of beers that you're going to be making there are they going to yeah. going to be its own thing or I mean I, I know you, you already said that you're going to be exclusive Milwaukee but um yeah. kind of talk a little bit about that yeah so um the idea there is with the can line we'll do 16 ounce four packs that is a package that central waters amherst does not produce right we do six pack 12 ounce can exclusively there um and so this will be our 16 ounce avenue we will produce beers um some of them will do like weekend can drops you know like this weekend dropping this beer whatever it might be uh, the nice thing about the state of Wisconsin, we can then, you know, we can transfer beers between breweries. Yeah. So we'll be able to take some of that batch, move it to Amherst, provide them for sale in Amherst, provide them for sale in Milwaukee. And then um, if there's desire, uh, some of that draft could see distribution out of the uh, Amherst place. So we've already got people from Stevens Point, Monaco, um, you know, saying like we'd love to carry some of the beers that you're making down there. So. In terms of what the beer mix is going to be, um, that's why I mentioned, you know, it's kind of like the dream job for a lot of brewers is, you know, what happens in any brewery, breweries are our factories at the end of the day, right? So we have a lot of fun with what we're doing, uh, but you end up making the same beer over and over again, right? Like our brewers and Amherst make a lot of mud puppy, you know, they make yeah. a lot of hot blonde. Um, whereas here, you know, all of those rules are off. There's really only two things that we, that Paul and I have really directed Brendan with. And that was the first thing that, that I said is I, we need to have a light logger, something like an homage to Pabst, the building we're in, the district we're in, the grounds we're on. We have to have something like that, you know? So that's the first beers Brendan brewed this week. The first two beers were, um, were our you know light logger and he did like the system's really nice and he's such a geek about stuff like that he did some really cool technical stuff on that system like decoction mashing and like Ooh. really really getting into it so like i was talking to him this morning and um you know we're trying to think all right is a beer like this gonna be ready for our opening and he's like no i don't think so man I, I would like to see this go to like six to eight weeks lagering time and i'm like okay you're brewery man let's do it yeah. like if you're gonna do it let's do it right Bring back, bring back some of those fermenters, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, and then so he did the second brew today that we haven't. I mean, we haven't even publicly mentioned what the beers were yet. So here's your breaking news. Um, so we did the light lager first today. Uh, he brewed the first, like it's going to be a you know like hazy IPA, one of the first ones of those, because that will be ready. This will help you too in terms of if you want to do a math. That one should be ready for the grand opening. Okay, brewed today for today should be ready we'll mm. see we'll see so 10 ready. 14 days fermentation time yeah, yeah. so so yeah. we're gonna be um we'll be uh i mean no we're gonna have a ton of beer on tap because we can move the beer from amherst down yeah there, yeah right so we'll have all like the favorites from you know amherst um barrel aged beers the more puppies the riffs hhgs all that yeah. I don't know. Did you see the, the, the uh, audience question on the thing? There we go. come in here. Yeah. Any special releases you have planned for the opening? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that's kind of what we're getting at. Like, you know, we're, we don't want to put the cart in front of the horse here. We have to open at some point here. You know what I mean? Like we're paying for the space. We need yeah. To, yeah. We need to open. Um, so we're hoping to have mm -hmm. some beers ready to go. Milwaukee brew beers for the opening. That's definitely the desire. It's probably going to, it's just going to keep happening after we open, you know, so you're just mm -hmm. going to have to really stay tuned, watch us on social media to see what the upcoming beers are, and we'll just keep on announcing them and keep on breaking them out. Gotcha. I'm guessing that uh, folks will be happy to show up and drink Cash and Sunset or uh, Brandy Barrel Barley Wine. Yeah. Or Trust me, for the grand opening down there, we're going to be digging deep into our cellars. There's going to be some really cool stuff on tap. Yeah. Sure. Nice, nice. Yeah. 
This is one I hear a lot. Headless Heron. Any chance that's coming? Dude, back? I hear that all the time, and that's probably one of our most requested beers to bring back. Look, I'm not a big pumpkin beer guy, right? But as they went, that was really that was that was really good. It was good, yeah. The bourbon barrel aged pumpkin thing really worked. I'll never say never about anything. I think it would be really really fun to bring that back. Um, you know, the base for that one is a style that we're currently not producing. It was easy to do before because we were always making slanja, which was our scotch ale. Scotch ale, so yeah. So we were, we were taking our scotch ale and putting it into uh, bourbon barrels and then, you know, incorporating the pumpkin and the spices and everything. So um, because we don't make that style anymore, we have to specifically do it. But now that we have a Ten few barrels. systems to work off of. Ten barrels. I wish that place had space for like barrel aging. There is no space in there to age anything like it's tight okay. in there. Um, yeah. Because the, um, there's no like belfry or anything, right? Like it's that that ceiling is open to the like all the way to the. You can get it? up there. Yeah. You can get up there. Like there's a ladder. I was, I went halfway up it this morning, and like a couple of my crew have been all the way to the top. That sounds like a story. I'm not afraid of heights, but like. It's a ladder. It's like you go up one ladder, you get into the castle tower, and then you got to kind of turn around, go up another ladder, you squeeze in a pipe. And when you're at the very top to get out onto the rooftop, it's like a wooden steps that are leaning out over the three-story drop that you can see down through. And I'm pretty sure they're original. And you're just kind of like, yeah, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I don't think I'm doing that. So I don't think I'm doing that. The nice thing is, though, we can, we can brew beers down there. We can, we can transport. You know, we can bring empty oaks down there, and yeah. them, put them into our trailer, and bring them back and age them in amber. So, we right, can right. Do barrel aging on that. If Brendan wants to, we can do. You know, we've got the farm program with all the wild sours that's still been developing going on now for a little over a year. So we can put stuff into there from him. And and Brendan's got a a, a very good log history with uh, working in sour programs as well. So. I think I think you'll see a lot of diverse, fun stuff from us down there. Things, yeah. like I said, things we're not doing anywhere else. Yeah, pretty exciting. Like um, one of the things that um, one of the things that I think people, a lot of people, are interested in is how. I mean, you know, Central Waters events are like really, I think, pretty core to the identity of the of the brewery. And I mean, if anybody's anybody's ever been to the if you haven't been to the anniversary fest or the anniversary party in January, like, you know, that's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty awesome event. And, um, big, I mean, you know, it's not like a, a, an intimate gathering. I mean, it ends up being intimate, but you know, in a different way. So, yeah, 3, people um, back to so I guess like, is like, will, is there going to be, I mean, will there be like satellite, uh, locations for like, I, I'm thinking also like river run, which is obviously a really different kind of thing, but, um, you know, events that, that I mean, kind of parallel in Milwaukee as well. Will we be doing events down there? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess like, will some of the events that Central Waters has become known for also be happening? You know, wow. in in, in tandem with Amherst. Yeah. Yeah. We've been we've been asked that before because you know there's there's a couple sides to that coin. You know, like yeah, sure. I, I think. Um, we would get a lot more traction from those more southern markets if we kind of also did it down there at the same time. We might lose something out of the Amherst place um, as a result. But I, I think for now, the jury's still out on that. We want to see. We don't know what to expect with this place. We don't know what kind of traffic flow we're going to see. We don't know, like, how many people are going to be coming in, how this is going to gonna play out. So I think once we get our feet under us and we see how this place is operating, then we can make some of those calls. Um, at the moment, we don't have any plans to say like, okay, the next anniversary party, um, it's going to be held, assuming we can even have an indoor anniversary party. We don't really know about that. And sure. Who knows when that's going to be able to happen again. Right, right. Um, but do we make a bottle pickup available at each location? We really don't, don't know yet. At okay. This point. So, okay. but in terms of events, there'll be plenty of events at that spot. One of the really cool things about where that is, so it's on like the corner of like Juno and 11th, and when you turn off Juno onto 11th South, which is right next to the brewery, there's an outdoor beer garden there, and that's a dead-end street. 
think it just ends right there and there's nothing there. Um, so the city of Milwaukee is perfectly happy to allow us to block off that block basically anytime we'd like. Uh, block party. Block party. Yeah. We can just open the gates and those really cool iron gates are actually like the original gates to the Papsbury that were on Juno Avenue and they moved them there. So we can swing open those 150, 160 year old gates and bleed the tap them out into the street. So um, it's going to be pretty fun. Yeah. And like circling back to that history, I mean, that is that is a, a huge part of a big part of the appeal of this location for you, right? I mean, and 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 not just like I mean, certainly the beer history and all that, but also you have some you have some Pabst history. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's well, a very fun. Yeah. I mean, well, it's this is a really special thing for me because it's my home. You know, I was born and raised in that city. Um, I only left there to come to Stevens Point for college, which is where Paul and I became buddies and started homebrewing together and stayed here, right? Uh, but, you know, Milwaukee is where I'm born and bred. And, you know, not not like, the, oh, I'm from Milwaukee. Where? Brookfield. No, you're not from Milwaukee, man. Like, you know, I'm like from the city. Easy. No, no. We, we, got a, we got a lot of, of, of viewers. I think, in <laughs> they all know it's true. Out of if, you're, if you're watching, you know it's true. Yeah, exactly. It's, <laughs> it just uh, hits different. Yeah, yeah. It's different. yeah. So, um, but uh, it's it's fun for me to bring it back there. And Paps was the beer that my dad drank, my uncles drank. You know, it's the only beer. And, like, I'll never forget as a kid, my dad would say, I, I got to pour him a beer, you know. So, I have to go to the fridge, get a beer. And he would tell me I could drink the foam because he didn't want foamy beer. So I would just, because he would tell my mom, I remember him saying, oh, there's no alcohol in foam, right? <laughs> That's fantastic. So That's I science. Remember, you can look it up. Like, look it up on the oh, internet. You know? Yeah, Google it, yeah. Just like hard pours into the glass, big heads and <laughs> sipping down all the, all the foam. I loved it. I loved it, you know? So um, awesome. pretty cool to bring up. Full all right, well. I don't want to let you go without at least one like kind of beer question. So um, kind of just real quickly, what's coming up um, for Central Waters? Maybe anything in the dark and barrel aged vein would be got any, got any hot tips here? Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I've got something that uh, nobody knows is coming up yet. So um, obviously for our barrel age program, um, you know, we do a drop every two months with that one. So you get the four packs every other month, essentially something new comes out. The next one is going to be Burn Barrel Stout. That's every November. That's like our core flagship. Yep. Uh, and then as we move into 2022, we like to switch a lot of that stuff up. So what we're, what we're looking at for the month of January, um, uh, yet to be perfectly named beer, but we're looking at like a seven layer, like seven layer bar sort of uh, barrel aged beer. So think, you know, chocolate, caramel, coconut, all that. All that fun stuff. So, um, <laughs> Greg's really losing his mind in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Um, so, yeah, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun one. Is um, do, do you, um, I mean, you know, the I, I, well, I don't know. I I was thinking that like, you know, Central Waters barrel aged beers were very kind of pure or something for a while, and I don't know, I. Maybe that's not really true. I mean, like, you know, there's always Cherry Stout. You know, Peruvian yeah. Morning was an early one. Cassian came out later, and that was, like, really on the early wave of, like, vanilla as a as an adjunct in, in barrel yeah. aging. Yeah. I mean. I think you're totally right there. I think that we do get kind of cut into a fabric of being a pure brewer like that, um, which which is fine by, fine by me. You know, I don't yeah. really pay too much attention to that stuff. Uh, but. I think you're right that we do. Um, I think it's kind of funny because I think it gets, there's a lot of things we've done over the years. I think people are just, it's kind of the bane of being 23 years old. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, the new kid on the block is the one doing the cutting, like the cutting edge stuff. And like, we were that kid at one point, right? Yeah. Only back then when we started putting beer into barrels in 2001, when like, you know, some of the brewers doing that now were, you know, six like you know like 
you know, <laughs> nice nobody flex, was around. Nice flex, that. Alan, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I like, I, I think the point of like every two months is, is a great one because I mean, these used to be quarterly at best. I mean, it's and then, I mean, it was, it was for, I mean, it, it, even going back, it was, you know, less than that. So, I mean, the fact that these are like these, you know, I, I think the important thing for like purists or, I mean, it's interesting to think about like barrel aged beer purists, but whatever, but you know, that, that this is not displacing, um, you know, more traditional, like straightforward beers that are, you know, that, I don't know, like, live and let live, you know, like let's, yeah. yeah. yeah right. And I mean, you know, so like putting, Putting beer into barrels was a pretty, you know, back then we didn't know anybody that was doing that. As it turned yeah. out, Founders and Goose was doing it back then, but we didn't know that because we didn't get Founders and Goose here, right? And then, mm -hmm. like, you know, we won our first gold medal uh, for a bourbon cherry stout. That was in 2006. Um, and then you're right, putting in Proving and, like, Hessing. And, you know, like, dude, it's hard to stay on top of that stuff. Yeah. That's, my, that's, that's, that's the hardest part here is, I mean – everybody's kind of looking for like, all right, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next yeah. thing? That's, that's definitely one way to like think about your business model is trying to be the first to do something next. Um, whereas ours has been like, we'd like to play on that stuff. We'd like to be a trendsetter, obviously. Um, but also like as a business person, you play the long game. Like, you know, we, it's fun to make that stuff, but it doesn't sell more than puppy porter. It doesn't sell more than honey blonde, which is a huge seller for us. Like yeah. those are the staples. Those are the beers that keep you as a brewery. And I think it's dangerous to, for us, speaking for myself, it's dangerous for Central Waters to like get lost in the whole, try to keep doing something that's going to be the next big thing because then you lose sight of what your core is and, and the things that the majority of people are spending their hard-earned money on. Um, I think the minority of the beer drinkers who are getting all these really fun, awesome beers, they just also happen to be the most vocal and the most visible. But the majority of the beer that sold is not that by a long shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I um, when I when I learned that uh, Mud Puppy was your like by a pretty wide margin bestseller, I was like, huh. I'm like, yeah, that's a good beer, but I don't think of it as, um, you know, I mean, like the brain space that it occupies as far as like, you know, I mean, I get, I'm not a normal beer consumer, but um, that was, that was surprising to me. And, you know, certainly like people, like probably a lot of people watching this show are thinking about, oh yeah, what's the next barrel aged beer? And and we think about that as such a core identity of Central Waters, and and, and I think you, I I don't think you would disagree with that. But, not at all. That's a huge but, part but it is it is not as big of a deal to the business probably as we think it is. It is still. I mean, it's a big part. Of what, yeah, what we, it's what we put on the beer map, right? Like yeah, uh, yeah. But right, right. Puppy has been the best selling beer for us since the day we opened the doors, and it continues to be today. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we're already into Badger Beer Hour Plus, um, so I and we're two segments in. So, um, Anello, thank you for coming on and being as forthright and uh, engaging as you were. Uh, I am enjoying. I think the same beer that you are right now. Just by oh, shame. buddy! Yes, look sir. at that. Not even planned. How about that? Uh, Anello, thanks for coming on. Uh, we'll stay in touch thank and uh, looking forward to that opening in um, two-ish weeks. Maybe. We'll Maybe. We'll okay. Soon. Maybe. You'll be there. All right.